Welcome to a Canyon versus Hambini update. <laughs> Welcome back to another Wayno's Photos video. <laughs> You're waiting for that intro, I know you were. Well, anyway, we've actually had confirmation from Hambini that he never took down his video on the Canyon Air Road seat post, nor was he instructed by Canyon to do so, and nor was Canyon involved in complaining about the video to YouTube to have it taken down. So really we go, <laughs> where did it go and why? Well, let's run that in row and let's have a bit of a discussion about what possibly could have happened here. Well, before we dive into the video, guys, I just wanted to let you know that I'm actually getting some One Eyes Photos jerseys made up and uh, they'll be exactly the same quality as these ones. And these jerseys, I've actually had them for three or four years. I'm not too sure how long, but I've had them a long time. And the colour's in good condition. They haven't thinned out or anything. And uh, yeah, so I'm going back to the same manufacturer that I've got these made in. And uh, if you're interested, go have a look down in the comments. Uh, these ones here are in an XL and I'm at about 85 kilos, just to give you an idea of how the sizing works. But uh, if you're actually interested, leave that down in the comments and uh, then I'll specifically get that size for you. In my last video, Canyon versus Hambini, Canyon left a comment and they were very clear that they were not involved in instigating the takedown of Hambini's video, which was related to the air road seat boast. So we need to ask ourselves, well, what, what happened with this video? Why did YouTube take it down? But before we actually start to discuss that, I'd just like to add some of the other points that Canon mentioned in their comments. And the one thing that they did say that their engineers are working flat out on a fix for the seat post. And they actually said that they need to actually test it and the technology needs to be mature. And they said that it needs to be tested to predetermined standards. Now, when they say predetermined standards, I'm not too sure what they mean, if they're just in-house standards, if they're German standards, or the international standards. But if Canon could get back to us on that, that'd be really appreciated. Now, if you've got any more questions, they said contact their reps through their normal channels. So guys, if you actually have a Canyon bike and you have problems with that seat post, that's one of the issues you've got, go and speak to the Canyon rep representatives. Well, that begs the question, where and what happened to Hambini's video? Well, I can only speculate here, but um, because the only person that really knows is YouTube, and unfortunately, when YouTube do these sorts of restrictions, like demonetize your channel or demonetize a video or take down a video, they really don't give you much sort of response. It's, it's more like you didn't meet our community terms and conditions, blah, 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 blah. So we really can only speculate. Now, there's certain points that do trigger YouTube's algorithm and or, or, and or someone reported it and if that was substantiated by YouTube, then they'll take down that video. Now, we do know that Hambini does have quite colorful language and we all know that that's all part of the enjoyment of watching Hambini. But unfortunately, YouTube's terms and conditions don't look so kindly on that sort of language. And it's pretty well known within the industry with creators that using, using swear words is being very risky with the YouTube algorithms. So it may have actually been taken down because someone made a report of the video or that uh, it just got flagged in the algorithm. He said something or said too many words that were not appropriate or whatever, and YouTube decided to take that down. And, uh, and sometimes they don't even, as I said before, they don't even give a reason why. You know, like people, you know, it could be that uh, you use some music, some copyright music or something, and boom, your, your video's down or demonetized, or it has something related to children, it's just taken down. So, you know, YouTube has become quite sensitive in modern times because they did, I believe it was about 1.8 million they were fined by the US government. So they're now a little bit um, sensitive to this sort of stuff. So that can only be my prediction in this case. So it's, I suppose it's all, the fight's over, the fight's over, and uh, it's all shake hands and uh, yeah, let's move on. So what is the really good news is Canon's addressing it. So when, they, when we come out with this new seat post, we'll have to actually have a look at it and uh, see what Canon 
come up with. Well, now on the UTI ban, what would you ban video? And if you haven't watched that, go check it up out up here. Um, I said I would actually review and get back to you on the comments. And the I've got my little sheet of paper right here, so I'll just have a look at it. And uh, the two top, the two top things that people wanted to ban were weight and also radios. So what they want is they want to be able to have the bikes go lower than 6.8 kilos and they also want to have the radios gone so you know the actual riders are riding free they're not under instruction and they believe that'll bring more excitement uh the next one that was on the list was bandage brakes <laughs> okay um i don't know if i'm fully on board with that i think technologies we should uh, relax lax restrictions on technologies but um yeah, I, I, I do think that they haven't actually got the disc brakes fully sorted yet, but uh, that's a controversial one, guys. And uh, a couple of the others were aero, you know, uh, change the aero rules, like I suggested, so they're freer. And uh, the other one was uh, dangerous dangerous barriers. Now, uh, this, is, this is actually really a good one, you know, because, um, and all the vehicles, some people mentioned about the vehicles, but they were kind of, it was a bit blurry about exactly you know, what that meant. But yeah, all these things like, you know, motorbikes, cars, barriers, all these sorts of things that, that actually become a hazard to the bicycles. Why the, why the hell we, we have so much people doing all this sort of, you know, crap in such a small area is beyond me, you know. And, and you know, actually what we saw last year, you know, we had one rider there, you know, drafting some guys behind him and then cut sharply out from behind a motorbike and uh, you know, one of the riders ran into the back of the motorbike. So this sort of carry-on really is is pretty poor. But uh, I think it does need to be cleaned up. And I think that the racing could be made more exciting. And I actually even mentioned that uh, they could probably actually introduce women into the full the full you know TV video format. I don't see why we can't have a handicap for them, and they race within the same stages but uh, in a shorter distance, you know, obviously competing with themselves. And they may actually bring the Constructors' Championships in with those bikes as well. So there's all these kind of variations we could have, and I think that that would actually increase women's cycling and get more coverage on the TV, and actually lift the sport as a whole. It might actually bring uh, women's interest more into, you know, the pro cycling peloton. Well, if you haven't watched that one on, uh, on women in cycling, go check it out up here and uh, see what you think about that. Okay, guys, well, that's where I'm going to leave it. I covered a few topics today, and uh, I'll see you next vid.